Greetings, Calvary and friends. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just praise God so much for this opportunity to be able to share with you, amen. Uh, we, here we are in the month uh, of September, a blessed and happy uh, Labor Day uh, to you. Uh, we know that uh, we continue uh, in this pandemic, but we also know that our God is still faithful. Amen. Is there somebody here? I can't hear you. Amen. But God can hear you, and you can hear yourself if you can just say amen to the fact that God is faithful. Amen. I just want to let us know, even as we celebrate our 125th uh, church anniversary, and you're going to be receiving some more information uh, regarding that, uh, by way of email and, and by way of our website. Just want to encourage you as we go through this time. I know that a lot of people are going through very, very difficult times. We've all had some difficult times uh, in these past, believe it or not, six months that we've not been uh, able to look one another in the face, able to give each other hugs and handshakes and kisses on the cheek and everything like we're used to doing, but we are still the body of Christ. We are still Calvary Baptist Church, even though we're not in these surroundings right now. The church edifice is standing here, but we're still Calvary Baptist Church, and we are 125 years old. Somebody ought to give God some praise and thanks for that, because we know if it had not been for the Lord on our side, that we would not have made it. Amen. But God has intervened in so many ways and has allowed Calvary to make 125 years. Amen. I just want to encourage somebody who's feeling down today, let you know that our God is a personal God who wants us to know him. There is nobody like God. Augustine, uh, that great uh, African uh, bishop, uh, said that uh, we, we can't find any rest until we find it in God. So there's somebody who's searching today. You're searching, you're looking high and low. You're looking everywhere but to God. You will never have any rest unless you find rest in God in the person of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so we're going to begin a new series. This is a new time for us. We are 125 years old. It's a new season for our church family, and we're beginning this new season as a church family uh, with Bible studies that you're going to be receiving information on. We're going to be teaching in October, uh, as well as this new sermon series on the book of Ezekiel. Believe me, God must really have some serious stuff to say to us for us to go to the book of Ezekiel. Because even when God was speaking to me and I said, God, after that last series, imagining the images <clears throat> of Jesus, I said, God, well, what's next? And God said, Ezekiel. And I looked at God, you know, I looked, of course, I did, but you know how we say figure of speech. But I kind of looked, I was like, Ezekiel. And I was like, whoa, well, God really has something for us uh, to learn. God really wants to speak to us in a very, very unique way. And so uh, today uh, we begin uh, an 11-part sermon series uh, on the uh, book of Ezekiel. I won't be able to obviously preach every text or every pericope, but uh, have it pretty much laid out. And I ask for your prayers as, as I'm preaching through that the Holy Spirit will really speak. And I'm praying certainly that God would be glorified, first of all, that, that, that you would be edified, that all of us would be edified. And then certainly we're praying that men, women, boys, and girls will come into a saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because we know that John 3.16 is true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Right now, even as I begin this sermon, I just want to pray with somebody, somebody who has never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. You just simply pray these words. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe that you died on Calvary to save me 
from my sin. And right now, I ask that you come into my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with sincerity, you are saved right now. And right now, you are under God's covering. Not only that, but, that the, but the Holy Spirit, he who is our counselor, our guide, he has come according to what it says in John 3. When Jesus was talking with Nicodemus, etc. The Holy Spirit, he has come to live on the inside of you. And so congratulations to you on your faith journey as you join with us as we continue to follow after Jesus Christ. Well, I just want to look to God in prayer. Uh, but first, before I do that, I just want to read our passage. Uh, the, the passage is Ezekiel 1, 1 through 3. And I ask that you take out your Bible app, you look at your Bible, open it up, what have you. Follow along with me, or if you're just watching, listening, go back and check it out. I'm asking that throughout this series that you commit to reading through Ezekiel so that uh, the Word of God can even penetrate your heart and mind even more and more. Well, the Bible says, Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was, the speaking of Ezekiel, as I was among the captives by the river Chebar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God on the fifth day of the month, which was in the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was upon him there. Thus ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding, and application of his holy word. Amen. Well, I want to preach from the subject, our God wants us to know him. Our God wants us to know him. I just want to let you know that our God is a personal God, and the only way that we can ever get to know him is through his son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And because some of you prayed that salvation prayer and you say the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, he, not it, he, the Holy Spirit, he's already living on the inside of you. And so I just want to just let you know that I'm excited about, I'm excited about people, anyone receiving Christ as their Savior. And it is only through receiving Christ and, 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 and having the Holy Spirit that we'll be able to read the book of Ezekiel as biblical truth. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says that the word of God is spiritually discerned. And so the person who does not have the Holy Spirit cannot appreciate what is written in the word of God. Well, my sisters and brothers, here we are in 2020 in September. We know that society and the world, any Christian knows this, have moved so far away from God. And, and I don't know about you, but as it relates to coronavirus, as it relates to what's going on uh, politically in this country, I just believe that in his mercy, that God is allowing some things to happen to point us to himself. And the only way for us to get to know God is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want you to be able to share this more and more. Share John 3.16, which I had mentioned earlier. Share Ephesians 2.8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. 
that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Then share with somebody. If you're saved, you're not just saved for yourself. Share with somebody, Romans 10 and 9. It tells us to confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and to believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says that we will be saved, amen. By receiving Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. Then we are able to read the scriptures not only as good literature, but as God's revealed truth to live by. Somebody ought to say amen. The Bible has many stories about God's love and judgment and his love and mercy in the midst of that judgment. And that's what we're living in right now. We're living in God's love and mercy even in the midst of COVID-19. God's love and mercy in the midst of all kinds of racism. God's love and mercy in the midst of all kinds of things that are going on. God is still on the throne and God's mercy, God's love, because of God's love and God's mercy, because of his mercy, we are not consumed. His mercies are new every, every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. And so we're living in the midst of all of that. And, and so in terms of understanding Ezekiel, <clears throat> historically, I need to be able to just share with you, historically, Assyria <clears throat> has already defeated Israel in the north the northern kingdom of Israel. The southern kingdom was called Judah, all right? And, and there was a division in 930 before the Christian era, all right, because of King Solomon's son, King Rehoboam, and that's when separated 10 and two. 10 in the north, two in the south, North was called Israel, South was called Judah, all right? Now, the North had been sacked by Assyria in 722 BCE. Our focus for this sermon series is the prophetic ministry of Ezekiel. Ezekiel did not live in the North, he lived in the Southern Kingdom of Judah. And so the context of Ezekiel can best be understood by reading 2 Kings 24, verses 14 through 16, and this is what it says. This talks about Babylon taking over Judah. He, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, carried all Jerusalem into exile, all the officers and fighting men and all the skilled workers and artisans, a total of 10,000. Only the poorest people of the land were left. You getting a picture about what's happening? Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin captive to Babylon. He also took from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother, his wives, his officials, and the prominent people of the land. The king of Babylon also deported to Babylon the entire force of 7,000 fighting men, strong and fit for war, and 1,000 skilled workers and artisans. And in this group, Ezekiel was taken. Now, by way of overview and preparation for this series, please allow me to share something of Ezekiel's difficulty. Ezekiel's difficulty. As we will see, Ezekiel was forced by God to have many difficulties. But Old Testament scholar and professor Catherine Fisterer Dar, D-A-R-R, -R, helps us to see this great and awesome difficulty that Ezekiel had when she explains this, and I quote her. From the time that Ezekiel was commissioned as God's prophet, until the fall of Jerusalem in 586. All right, so let me just stop there. The Northern Kingdom fell in 722 BCE, and the Southern Kingdom fell, the Northern Kingdom fell in 722 BCE to who? To Assyria. Then the Southern Kingdom fell in 586 BCE to 
Babylon, all right? So from the time that Ezekiel was commissioned as God's prophet until the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BCE, Ezekiel engaged in dismantling, dismantling <clears throat> the orthodox Yahwistic theology of his day. That theology emphasized God's or Yahweh's promises to the Israelites. For example, the blessings attending the covenant forged at Sinai, God's absolute commitment to the Davidic dynasty, the inviability, inviability the in inability to be touched of Jerusalem, the site of the temple. God, got tongue-tied there, inviolability, that's what it is, that's it. That, and that means the inability to be touched in terms of Jerusalem, you know, the site of the temple. The people, you know, what I'm trying to say is that they did not believe what Ezekiel was telling them because they were believing those promises from the past. Now let me explain, Ezekiel had a hard time. He was not an outsider, he was an insider. He was son of a priest, boozy. Yet he was called by God who ordained the priesthood, because God ordained the priesthood, to prophesy a profound and chilling interruption to the manner of life he himself had matured in. Now he was already at the age of 30. So imagine him among the exiles in Babylon, telling his fellow compatriots that God, the God of Israel, the God of the patriarchs, was going to destroy Judah through Babylon, just as God had allowed Israel in the north to be destroyed by Assyria. He had a hard time. The people, and I, I the people, Dr. Dar says, the people God called Ezekiel to preach to didn't want to hear that. They believed the promises. And Dr. Dar says, these promises strengthened the exile's resistance. So here is the man of God with the vision of God, and he's preaching to the people of God who have been in rebellion and they don't believe him because of what has been spoken already. And so their, their belief in the word of God was strengthening their resistance to hearing the man of God. But the man of God was proclaiming and prophesying that judgment was coming because the covenant had been dishonored. I'm telling you, he had a hard time. These promises strengthened the exile's resistance to Ezekiel's relentless insistence that Yahweh had resolved utterly to destroy Judah on account of his long-lived and ongoing abominations. There it is, what Dr. Dar just said. He was saying the end was approaching. Israel's failure to honor the obligation, Dar says, of its covenant with God was bringing upon its own head the full weight of the covenantal curses. Well, question is, where is the hope? Where is the hope? Well, there's always hope in God. There's always hope in God. Did Israel have a future? Absolutely. You listening, do you have a future? Absolutely. How do you know it? Because you're still breathing? As long as we are still alive, we got a future. We don't know how long it is, but as long as we are still alive, we need to get to living. We need to get to seeking God. We need to get to asking God, what, what is it that you have me to do? Who is it? that you had me to be? How can I be more obedient to you? Show me my life through your eyes, God, etc. Our God wants us to know him, y'all. 
So did Israel have a future? Absolutely. And we see that. We see that later on. But a lot of time, God, because God is a just God, even though he's a loving God, God does chasten us and he does shake us up sometimes for us to grow. He does prune us, etc. God wants us to know him. And we see later on in the book that there's some really, really, really good news about restoration. But here we are in this introductory sermon. And so what can we take away from these verses before we go? Number one. And we look at these first three verses and we can find God has plans for his people. We look in chapter one, we see that God had a plan for Ezekiel. The text said that he saw visions of God at age 30. Now check this out. This would have been the age at which he was formally ordained as a priest had he remained in Jerusalem. But check this out. God's got the whole world in his hand. Even though he was in Babylon, God was still there with him. Lord have mercy. I could go on, but I don't have time to. Number two, God chose Ezekiel out of the tradition to prophesy reform. Did y'all get that? God chose someone who was in the prophetic tradition to prophesy an interruption to life as it had as it was being lived God chose Ezekiel out of the tradition to prophesy reform verse 2 says that he was in that priestly tradition what's the message God often uses people who are around the things of God to serve him yet check this out the things or the trappings of God don't make the man or woman it's mainly that man or woman witnessing to the faithfulness of God that grows them up in God. Moving on, can't preach it all. Number three, God anointed Ezekiel, and I'm done now. He anointed Ezekiel to work the plan that he had for him. Bible says, there the hand of the Lord was upon him. When God anoints a person to do something, there is nothing in all the world that can stop that from happening. Well, I'm done with this first installment, but I will say to you, please read Ezekiel and pray for God to open your eyes. God may be using this time to speak to you in a way that God has never spoken to you before. As we go through this series, let's pray for the series itself and let's pray for our nation, our world, our city. Pray for more and more people to be saved, to become followers of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please tune in next week.